You are on the platform. Let's get back to a story that uh, I think a lot of people are interested in, apart from the people who are making the story um, and will not talk to us. Television New Zealand, uh, which is seen to be merged at the cost of $370 million with RNZ, uh, and it is a publicly owned broadcaster, though it operates commercially. TVNZ has started promoting a program that is going to stream online called F Boy Island, and I'll give you, if, in case you've missed it, F Boy Island works on the premise that there are a group of, I don't know, 20 young men on a kind of island, it'll be at some resort. Half of them are nice boys, whatever that means, and half of them are F boys, and yes, that is the F word, boys. And there are three female contestants who presumably are going to wear bikinis and lots of lip gloss. And they have to decide which boys are the F boys who just want to use them and which boys are the nice boys who might, might be interested in a relationship. It is one of the most crappy premises, I think, for a piece of reality television ever. But to make matters worse, one of the contestants in the New Zealand version of F Boy Island, um, a New Zealand version which your taxpayer dollars or your dollars have paid for the rights for, one of the contestants actually was recently in court and acquitted on a charge of um, suffocation um, because he put his hand over the mouth of a young woman who was drunk, who he was fooling around with, and he, but he got off because he put his hand over her mouth not to suffocate her, but to stop her screaming for help. So he gets a walk, much to the chagrin of the judge who said he had no uh, choice in that. This guy then applies to be one of the F boys or one of the contestants on F Boy Island. And because he's not convicted, he thinks there's no need for me to mention that to the producers. What's the problem? Of course, it does come out. And of course, it's a problem. Now, he's been edited out of the program. TVNZ have never actually given an interview about F Boy Island and what sick person in their programming department thought it was a good idea. Um, he's been edited out, but they're still going to run F Boy Island. And I, though I'm not into cancel culture, I just don't think they should, and many of you don't think they should. So what messages are these sort of reality TV shows, which I have to say, in my humble opinion, trivialise sex, um, and I think are not good, if you like, for the, and oh, I sound like a Christian, the moral fabric of the country. What messages are we sending young people about healthy relationships, sexual relationships, um, and attitudes, I have to say, towards any one of it, any sex in terms of relationships. I was trying to find someone who, who I would trust to have a decent, no, not a decent take, who I would trust to really think about this in a good way. And uh, that I found we landed on our next guest. Uh, you'll know her well. Uh, Louise Nicholas, she is the country's, I would say, leading sexual violence advocate and campaigner, and she joins us now. Louise, lovely to talk to you again after some time. Yes, it is, Sean. How are you? I'm good. What about yourself? Are you going well? Yeah, going well. Very busy, but um, that's a good thing. Yeah. All right, so, F-Boy Island, are you aware of this story and what has gone on here? I, yeah, I uh, happened to read about it and my first um, thought was, why? <laughs> just why, <laughs> in, just in, in complete, why would anyone make this crap? Yeah, exactly. To, to be honest, um, it's, it's straight off I was thinking, well, the, the title itself is out the gate. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and, and, you know, let's, let's be open here. It's consenting adults. That's, you know, no issue with that. But it's what, what's the, the message behind it? Mm. And, and that, for me, was, was the big one. It, what, you know, what, what's it teaching our, you know, our young people or even, you know, adults um, that you, you go off and you have sex and then you score it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like and form, then you write it. Look, I was thinking about you in the context when I got my producer in contact with you. We first met, gosh before you were famous, if you like, a long, long time ago. And I think of the yeah. world... Uh, I think of the world that we lived in then, Louise, mm. and attitudes to sex, sexual norms, uh, sexual violence, um, gender relationships, power relationships. We live in, like, on a different planet, don't we? Absolutely. 
absolutely. And especially our young people, um, you know, they're, they're confused about healthy sexual relationships um, and we take, you know, a lot of what happens on social media um, through that, you know, our young people think going on Pornhub, uh, this is how you have a, you know, a sexual relationship um, and it's, it's teaching them, no, this is not the way. And I think a program like this isn't helping in that matter as well. Um, Do you think you know, it reinforces negative approaches or dam potentially damaging approaches to sexual relations and intimacy? Yes, absolutely. You know, you, you, you come across these, these, I don't know how many blokes there are or, or these three women, and they're literally going to score what strangers are good or not good at and, 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 uh, sexually. And I just think that's, that's just ridiculous. Mm. It's, it's not sending a very good message at all. Yeah. And it strikes me, Louise, this isn't actually anti-woman or anti-men. It is anti-both mm. genders and mm. it trivialises and in some ways commoditises both genders. Anyone who is going to be sexually active or, or, or intimate, it makes it a transaction and kind of meaningless. Yeah, it does. It absolutely does, and you're right about you know about the genders. It, it doesn't matter, um, but I, I just believe it does trivialise you know the the opportunity for um, young people to enjoy safe sexual relationships. Uh, programs like this do not help in that. I don't think there's enough um, sexual education out there. I think that's that's one of our downfalls because everything's around social media. Um, you know, there's that shame and blame um, on social media. And when you're, you're actually watching it on TV, um, I, I just hope people don't, to be honest. Mm. I really do. Yeah. Um, Louise, the young man who, who clearly, if you like, sparked this controversy, um, mm. he actually got interviewed on a radio show the other day and his line was, well, I didn't get convicted of anything. So I didn't feel I needed to tell TVNZ that I'd been acquitted of a charge of, of smothering or, 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 or strangulation. I was thinking back too, and in your case, uh, the men who abused you never got convicted of actually abusing you doesn't mean they didn't and doesn't mean they were decent guys, eh? Oh, and, and, and that's it. Just because this young fella um, was acquitted of, of that charge uh, doesn't mean he didn't do it. And, you know, we get that um, a lot, sadly, uh, you know, supporting our survivors through the criminal justice system. And at the end of the day, it does come down to just because a person is acquitted of, of a, um, a serious sexual crime or any sexual crime doesn't mean it didn't happen. It's just that there wasn't quite enough evidence to, to get to a conviction. Mm. That, at the end of the well, day... Well, the judge that, actually said he would love to have convicted him but he wasn't putting his hand over this young woman's mouth to suffocate her, just to shut her up so she wouldn't scream for help. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. That, and that's it. That, to me, is just ridiculous. She was intoxicated. Um, he took an opportunity to, to do what he wanted with her, put his hand over her mouth um, so she couldn't scream. Well, she had no way in consenting... Um, to, to what was happening. So that was a criminal charge and he should have gone down for it. Louise, we have been trying all week to get someone from Television New Zealand, Simon Power, their chairman, their um, public relations person, their head of production, to make any meaningful comment, not just about that individual, but about the whole concept of F-Boy Island mm. and it being made by and aired uh, via the internet by a publicly owned broadcaster. We have had absolutely no response, okay? Nothing, nada, emails. The best you can do at TVNZ is get through to the poor woman at reception in Auckland. I'm asking you whether or not in your role, and because I think you have massive credibility in this year, area, would you publicly ask Simon Power and Television New Zealand to pull F Boy Island. Yes, I would. Uh, and you're doing because, that now? Like I said, yeah, absolutely. I can't see the sense in this program and the message 
the bad messages it's going to send out, especially to our young people. We don't need this type of crap. Excuse my language. No, put, you don't put need your to. money. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's like they need to put their money into um, programs that are going to help people, benefit people, not this type of stuff. That's mm. just a waste of money. Yep, uh, I hear. Hey, so good talking to you again after so long, Louise. I'm glad to hear you're well. And thank you very much for the perspectives uh, that you brought to the platform today. No worries, Sean. Thank you. Cheers. I will take care. Louise Nicholas, sexual uh, violence advocate. And there you have, I think, one of the most credible sexual violence advocates in the country. A public call. Simon Power, anyone in management at TVNZ, uh, a, a public call from someone with massive credibility in this area saying, F, F, Boy Island. Will you respond? We will be on you again today, Benny. I'll be whipping you to get someone from TVNZ. Oh, not in that way. I didn't mean it like that. Um, good on you, Louise. Good on you for, uh, for, for chatting. It's nice to hear from you again.